Vampire is a 1932 silent film. Director Carl Theodore Dreyer started planning this film as soon as he finished filming his classic film, The Passion of Joan of Arc. The story follows Alan, who visits an inn in a remote French village, only to find out that the townsfolk are under the spell of a vampire. It is now part of the Criterion Collection. Hi folks, and welcome back to Garage Vampire Thon, where every day for the month of October, we explore a vampire movie. Today we're talking about vampire, <laughs> the most simplistic term for a vampire movie. Yesterday, we talked about Dracula, which was a talkie. Now we're jumping back into silent film. If you guys saw my Nosferatu review, I, I said in that review that it's very difficult for me to get into silent films. I appreciate them for their historical context, but just me as a viewer, I don't really enjoy them unless they're more modern and do some kind of cool take with it. I must say I was really surprised by this movie. This is the first time I watched this movie and it feels really, really, really ahead of its time. This does not feel like a 1932 silent movie. This feels like an art movie that would have come out in maybe like the 60s. Besides the fact that it's silent, of course. What made me really gravitate towards this movie is that the whole thing kind of has this dreamlike style to it. When characters talk, it, it's kind of just like a faint murmur. And at first I tried putting the volume up on my TV and I was like, what the fuck are they saying? But it's just jargon. It doesn't really mean anything. Everything about it, how like the continuity works in this movie, how we just don't understand what is really going on, everything kind of feels mysterious. It really feels like you're in a dream. Because when you're in a dream, you don't really understand what you see. A dream has a bunch of random shit going on, and so does this movie. There's a scene of silhouettes of musicians performing instruments. <laughs> There's another scene where our lead character, Alan, kind of has this out-of-body experience and starts seeing from a different perspective. This all creates world building without really saying everything. I just talked about the Universal Dracula movie, and one thing that old talkies do that's kind of outdated nowadays is that they give so much exposition. They're like, well, you see, the only thing that could kill a vampire is if you drive a dagger through their heart. And you're just like, okay, yeah, let's, get, let's go with it. Which, again, I'm not dissing on that Dracula movie. It's like... It's almost a 100-year-old movie at this point. It's like, I gotta cut it some slack. But this is an example of something that's more up my alley. Just create this mythical world without necessarily telling me anything. That's what I like in a movie. To add to that dreamlike aesthetic, the director actually tried putting a gauze in front of the camera, which isn't very noticeable from what I can tell on the DVD copy that I watched. But it kind of adds like a, just a little flair to everything. Everything kind of looks more smoothed out. Kind of adds to that dreamlike aesthetic. One thing that's really notable about this movie is that we don't see a vampire. There's no biting. Even in Nosferatu, there's a scene where the vampire goes to kill someone. We don't see any of that. We don't even see the vampire. There's no uh, 
Nosferatu or Dracula or insert a vampire name here. None of that. It kind of just happens in the background. There's kind of this plague that's going around the town. Honestly, I probably wouldn't even know it's a vampire movie if the title and the title cards didn't indicate that this is, in fact, because of a vampire. Which, again, adds to that kind of dreamlike quality to the film. And that was very intentional. I looked at interviews with the director of this film, and he flat out said, yeah, I was trying to replicate a dream. I was trying to make this movie a dream. More of a nightmare, but a dream nonetheless. When I was watching this movie, I felt like I was watching something illegal. <laughs> I felt like I found some weird movie in an attic, in an abandoned castle, like a weird Super 8 film, and I just decided to pop it in, it's just this weird, eerie movie. That's really what this movie feels like. And there's some actually truly scary moments and some really nice visual effects here considering that this is 1932. There's a really nice shot of a, a fade of a skull. We see the man's face and then it fades to a skull and back to his face and it, it's done very seamlessly. I'm actually pretty impressed that they pulled that off in a 1932 movie. And I feel like partially why I think this movie is good despite it being a silent movie is because there isn't a lack of sound. They did a good job at really throwing you into this environment, which, yeah, it's interesting. Interesting watch. Interesting watch. Guys, have you seen Vampire? Did you like it? Did you hate it? Am I just an art snob? who likes silent movies from the Criterion channel. I don't care. Comment below, let me know, and I'll see you guys tomorrow for more Garage Vampire-thon.